everybody, it's Laura Fudge with Fudge Beauty and it's been about a year since my first video where I talked about how I built my business as a solo esthetician and I am blown away by the feedback from that video and a lot of the people asking me you know, for advice, a lot of people reaching out to me, but there was also some feedback saying that I didn't give really the nitty gritty about how to create your own spa business. So I finally made a list and I wrote down a bunch of stuff, a bunch of the steps that I took personally to get to this place and all there's other stuff that, um, other things that I would recommend people to do also to get to having their own spa studio. So First off, I'm not sure if you noticed, but this is a different studio than when I first made that video. That was quite an interesting story about how I ended up leaving that place. A part of it had to do with the fact that the woman I had rented from, she had a very unclear vision of her future, of where she wanted to take her own personal business. And after a couple months, it became very clear that I did not fit in the picture. So um, push came to shove and I ended up having to leave and we dissolved the lease. It was kind of crazy. So if you want to know more about that, let me know and I can tell you some more. But I think my general advice from that is first, really know who you're renting from and see if they have a track record as a business owner and whether they make good choices in alignment with the business owner or if they're just kind of on a whim because hopefully you'll follow your gut and find someone that you can really trust. Uh, and second off, my advice is to make sure you get insurance. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more here, but read your leases very carefully. And if you don't understand something, investigate it before you sign. So that's my advice there. Yeah. Okay. So how I started solo and concrete steps that you can take to do this very officially, to do this very practically. Because my last video I talked about, you know, the mindset shift and all the lovely things that the universe handed to me that really helped me take step by step to create my spa business. Um, but some people weren't satisfied with that. So here I go. I'm going to do the other side. In my mind, this is the boring stuff. This is the boring stuff that you need to do to create your spa business. So this is also assuming that first off, you are already licensed as an esthetician or as a cosmetologist in your state. And you have the done, the education, and you have all the licenses you need to have that type of establishment. Not that you have that license yet, but that you could even run an establishment. There's laws in place that say the type of person who's allowed to be present when the establishment is open. And hopefully you have that license that can cover that. I am in Michigan and I have to, you have to be 18 years of age and you have to have a license that allows you to do everything that is currently performed in that studio. So that works for me. So yeah, okay. So the first thing on my how to become a solo esthetician list is the first thing you wanna do is establish an LLC. So an LLC stands for a limited liability corporation. What this does is that it helps to separate your own personal family assets from your business assets so that if you were to make a mistake in your business somehow, um, it, wouldn't, it would stop at your business. Someone could sue you for the assets of your business, but they couldn't also take your house or take your car or anything like that. So starting with an LLC is hands down the most important thing, um, especially because a lot of people won't take you seriously, not just you know someone on the internet taking you seriously, um, but banks won't take you seriously. That's my next thing. Once you get an LLC, um, which actually in the state of Michigan, it costs about $50 to register for one. Uh, it took like a month process. This is, a, this is a long process, guys. So you can't just one day decide that you're going to have a business and expect to be up and running in two weeks. So having an LLC is the biggest thing. If you're even thinking about going solo, start with your LLC today. Look into the process. Um, first, uh, and a little side note, when you are Googling the process for your state, do not get sucked into different lawyer um, and law websites that try to tell you that they're going to file on your behalf and that you can charge, they'll charge you a couple hundred dollars. No, you can file on your own as far as I know. I mean, granted, I can't be responsible for legal advice, so decide on your own. But I decided to not go through a lawyer and I, everything turned out just fine. So there's that. Okay, so the next thing, once you have the LLC, you're like, okay, cool, I'm official. Oh my gosh, I have an LLC. Like, holy cow, I'm I'm a business. You know, what do I do next? 
my advice is to look at your finances. So I decided to go through a bank and the bank couldn't talk to me. I couldn't open a business bank account until I had my LLC. Once that was done, that was brilliant. They you know, ran the numbers, they did my credit check against my own personal credit because I'm the owner of the LLC, and they gave me both a credit card and a bank account. So with those, I was able to kind of kick it off. Um, like I said in my other video, if you haven't seen it, I got really, really fortunate that my mother-in-law had owned a salon for 30 years, and when she was deciding to, to kind of peter out that salon and retire that salon, at the same time I wanted to come into the business. So I was able to inherit a lot of her supplies. I got very, very fortunate that way, so I didn't have to use all of my credit card and all of my financing from the bank to go to my, to go into like my, um, my furniture, my linens, um, a lot of the like gloves and stuff and supplies she had left over. So that stuff was already kind of handed to me, thank goodness. Um, so that let me use a lot of my other financing for different things. Like um, I did a lash training, I did, um, I invested in like marketing, stuff like that. So you're gonna have to play that by ear, but you need money to kick off the business. A lot of times you have to spend money to make money and it can be really, really hard and discouraging, but that's the fact of the matter. I don't know of any person that really made it far in business if they were just handed a business. And it's interesting because I think it helps up the ante when we have to invest ourselves and to invest financially in the outcome, we tend to do a lot better. It's true, it's psychological, so there's that. Uh, so once you find financing with the bank, it also is helpful and you have your LLC, that's also really helpful to apply for a tax ID. So. I'm a solo entrepreneur, I do not have any clients, and I also don't sell product beyond my direct sales company. So I don't need to have a tax ID because I don't charge sales tax in my state, but I got one anyway because I can't exactly remember what was the catalyst of getting my tax ID, but it was really helpful for me and it helps me feel more official. And if I do ever decide to take employees, I can modify my tax ID to accommodate that. So it's just another layer of protection so that when I'm filing my taxes or when things, you know, if there's a financial concern, I have more protection so that it, it goes against my tax ID and not necessarily my social security number. So that can be really helpful. So once you have all that in place, hopefully you're gonna find a location for your studio. So I'm in Michigan and my small town, I live in a small town south of Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's called Milan, Michigan. And I am currently renting a space in a co-working studio or a co-working building. And I've been able to get a license because I have all the requirements. I have a sink, hot cotton cold water. I have, uh, oh my gosh, bathrooms, a uh, source of water away from the place that mixing chemicals, all these things. So. Finding a space can be a little tough, and you also have to consider the overhead costs. Some places will charge by week, some places charge by month. Luckily, this place I'm in charges by month, and it makes it really affordable, um, but finding a place is a big part of it, right? So that leads into the next thing, getting your place licensed. It is incredibly important that you get your place licensed before you start to see clientele, because you run a lot of risks of not being fully licensed and seeing people and if something goes wrong they can report you to the state you could be sued you could have your license taken away or at the very least you have to show up in court and that's going to be really stressful and probably cause a lot of issues for you in your business so that's something to think about um the licensing process is not quickly quick either at least not in my state so I remember I submitted my license application in the end of March, maybe like March 29th or something like that. And I was not, I recently, two or three days ago, so May 18th, I'm going to say, I got my license in the mail. So it took a very long time, almost two months, to have the my application processed, to have the inspector get a request to call me, for me to schedule the inspection, to have the inspection, and then to get all the paperwork back to be able to be fully up and running without any concern whatsoever. So this is not a quick process. Please keep that in mind. This is not for the faint of heart. You have got to invest the time and the effort to make it happen. So there's that. Um, 
So beyond all the legal stuff, at this point you've got your LLC, you've got your financing, you've got your establishment, you've got your stuff, you have to fill the room. So that's where I was talking about the investment in from the bank, having that financing can go really far because then you can get your, your spa table, your wax pots, your towel warmer, you know, furniture, decor. I have this gorgeous artwork up here. Um, I have like different lamps, I've got mirrors, I've got product. So it goes so far. I have to have cabinets for my linens so that my linens stay sanitary and free of residue or whatnot. So you really have to think of the capital that you're investing. Um, then you're going to start thinking about, you know, how are you going to have your books? So you're going to do pen and paper. And I, I think that is totally viable for a solo esthetician to have pen and paper. If you are running your own business, if you're on your own, you can just keep track of it that way. People will call you, people will text you, people will message you. And that's another thing. Maybe you're going to want to get your own separate phone number. I've decided that um, especially as someone who's like a little anxious, a little bit of an introvert, I hate answering random phone calls of numbers that I don't know. So now I can kind of filter them or screen them, I guess you can say, because I have a separate number that my phone will let me know if it's someone new. Right now I'm using the GoDaddy service of SmartLine. And so when someone calls my SmartLine number, my phone will come up and tell me, this is somebody calling your business line. Whereas before I tried to use Google Voice, because Google Voice you can get like one free phone number, but there was no way to delineate who was calling what number, whether it was my personal cell phone number or my Google Voice number. So that was a little tough. So anyways, having this ability to filter my calls, to know who was going to be calling my business, and then in turn being able to work on my books was really helpful. Um, but I did decide to go with a uh, booking software. Right now I'm using Vigaro Pro and I love it because it's a really easy interface. My clients can click on my links and very easily book. Um, it, I wanted to be very intuitive for my clients and then on my end I can get text messages, I get email reminders and it does a lot for me and it costs about $30 a month. Um, if you want to look into it, I can leave my link in the comments and it'll kind of refer you through me and we can just chat about it and I'll let you know more about my experience, but also you can try it out. I know it has like a really nice trial period. I think it's like either 14 or 30 days and I've been really happy with it so far. I've been using it for a couple months, so that's pretty cool. And then, okay, booking software. I just talked about that. Now the next thing I have is accounting software. So I have to admit, accounting and finances have been so hard for me, mostly because it's like a scary point. Like I have never wanted to really be a business owner simply because of having to be accountable to my accounting, but it turns out that it was a lot of hard work, but I'm really enjoying it now. I'm really enjoying being on touch. Oops, my pause up. I'm really enjoying being accountable to my accounting. I actually had a lot of fun doing my taxes, which was really surprising to me and my therapist, but becoming available to my finances and having a, a software that was, you know, related to my, oh, my business and my bank was really, really helpful. So I use QuickBooks and I have an accountant that actually helps me and she's able to see my stuff through QuickBooks too. So. But that's also a monthly charge. I think it's $10 a month or you can pay for a year in advance. And from there, it really, you know, that's another cost overhead, but it can really help you in the long run. It was very much easier to do my taxes than I thought it would be just because everything with QuickBooks and Intuit and TurboTax was all friends. So that was really nice. So uh, another thing you want to think about are your supplies. So I kind of mentioned this already, but you're going to have to think about finding a best place to buy all the supplies. I get some stuff on Amazon, I get some stuff from industry source, I sometimes will even go and get things from like Meyer or just a store nearby. I compare prices, I try to make sure that I get a really good deal, but also you want to think about the convenience of like having no shipping charges or having to take time out of your day to go drive and go somewhere. So that's something to consider. I had a whole spreadsheet about all the supplies and I compared prices of different places and where the best is to get them. So right now everything goes pretty smooth that way, but it takes a lot of work and a lot of thinking to do that. So uh, we're also going to talk about products. So not just, you know, what you 
use on your clients. So like not just getting your supplies and um, and stuff, but for like skincare products, if you are deciding to do facials, the skincare buy-in can be really, really hefty. I looked at a lot of places and at first I wasn't even going to offer facials because I knew that the, the overhead was tremendous. Um, I had looked at a couple different lines and some of them, the buy-in was somewhere between $2,000 and $4,000. And a lot of it was to get product on the shelf to turn in retail. And that was a lot of overhead just to kind of invest in my hope that I would be able to help people buy product. So as a solo esthetician, that was really hard for me to do. So I didn't, at first, like I said, I did not think I was going to use any product line. Um, recently, um, I was talking to another esthetician and she uses a line called Image. And I've been looking into them too and I'm considering utilizing some of them for my back bar, like professional products. But for now, I'm using Lime Life by Alcone and utilizing them especially for my home care. But what's nice is that it makes a really great facial, especially when I bring my personal touch, my professional touch to the experience. I have had no complaints. People have loved everything that I've done so far. And what's nice about Lime Life by Alcone is that original purchase um, to join is only $169 and you get a lot in your kit. And then I already made another video and I can link it below about the other type of investment that you would need to make in order to purchase a bunch of the Lime Life product to have everything that you need skincare wise to perform services, to, to perform really nice services. So there's that. Um, but otherwise that's something really that you need to consider. Like who are you going to use and are you just going to have back bar or are you going to be able to complete the service and offer a home care product? Um, I wanted to have something I could offer home care instead of just having a back bar line because if someone loved what I did for their skin, I wanted to be able to recommend things to them. And I also wanted to make money doing it. It's kind of silly for me to be recommending product and to not make anything off that. Um, you know, there are some people out there that just think, you know, it's from the goodness of their heart, they're going to recommend product. But I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. And I deserve a cut if I'm recommending something. I truly do. It's the fact of the matter. I've been doing this for eight years and I've sold myself short way too many times and I'm done. So I got Lime Life and I love it. So there's that. Uh, so <clears throat> I think something else I want to talk about is advertising. So this is more of like a soft investment in the sense that it's not entirely necessary to be up and running. You don't need to have advertising to sit in your room and to be legal and to perform a service, but you have to get people to come to you. That's huge. You can't have a viable business if you don't have clients. It's a fact of the matter. So advertising can be anything from running Google ads, Facebook ads, um, to being like plastering your face on bench, like bus bench seats and stuff like that. But honestly, I think the best way to do it is organic advertising. So like networking and being a part and out in your community. Um, but the fact that you still have to invest something, time, money, coaching, something to get there. So that's something that you really want to consider. Uh, and that leads me to my next thing. Having a network and being a good networker is a big deal. I know I've learned so much about that from network marketing. Not only am I with Lime Life right now, but I used to do Beachbody and for a hot second I was with Unique forever ago. But I've learned a lot about how to network and how to be there and get to know people and how that has immense returns. So even if you're not talking to someone and from the perspective of, hi, I'm an esthetician, do you want me to wax your legs? The thing is, if they know who you are and if they know what you love to do, chances are next time they need a service, they're going to think of you and that can go really far. So networking is a huge skill and having a network is a huge asset. I know I mentioned that in my last video, but someone, I don't know. I'm not sure if they thought that that wasn't a good enough answer. So yeah. Uh, then we're going on to modes of income. So that's where you also have to ask yourself if you have a viable business plan is if you have multiple modes of income. Are you doing just facials? Are you doing facials and waxing? Are you doing makeup applications? Are you doing on-site makeup applications? Can you do bridal parties? Can you do photo shoots? Like, do you have multiple modes of income? And not just services, but do you have income from product sales? Do you have income from referrals? Do you have income from, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think. There's so many ways that you could have income, but you really need to think about it. 
And do you have income from, you know, affiliate links? There's a lot to think about. Do you have income from YouTube? It, there's just, you want to go outside the box and you don't want to just rely on your service sales. Truly, I've heard that millionaires typically have at least seven streams of income. Sometimes it's investments, sometimes it's multi-level marketing, sometimes it's real estate. So really consider that. You need to have different modes of income. And then, and also on the same like kind of not as hardcore concrete things, you know, you're gonna need a separate email address probably. You're gonna wanna have a website. I know a phenomenal website designer. I can let you know about her. Um, you're going to need to have social media. Like you're going to have want to have Instagram, Facebook, possibly a YouTube channel, whatever you think that your ideal clients are, you should have that type of touch point in your, in your business. And then what kind of goes in hand in hand with that is having a brand, having a personal brand, having a business brand. I am Fudge Beauty LLC. I typically show up as Fudge Beauty, I typically de decorate the same way, um, use the same colors in my marketing, use the same colors in my clothing. You know, I just try and show up as my brand because truly you are a brand. And the more uniform and put together you look, the better it is. So sometimes you can hire people to help you create logos. Sometimes you can help hire people to help you create this brand. Or if you do a lot of research and a lot of introspection and a lot of thought, it takes a lot of work, you can do it on your own. It's not impossible. I recommend hiring a professional. It made my life so much easier. But then again, that's another investment, so you have to decide. So, and then like I said earlier, I wrote this down at the end of my list, even though it's not very fun. You're gonna think about insurance. So there's gonna be general business liability insurance, which can be like, general liability, like if someone slips and falls, or professional liability, like someone thinks that you screwed up professionally and they want to sue you. Having these types of insurances can protect you. And having an LLC, yes, does protect you to a certain extent, but having that extra insurance can really give you peace of mind. You know that your insurance company, you can file a claim, you can you know, pay for, if you ruin their clothes, if you are doing a waxing service and you accidentally get wax all over their pants and it messes them up, you could use liability insurance to help cover the cost of replacing their pants instead of you having to do that out of your pocket. So you want to ask your insurance company what type of coverage they have, but insurance can really help. Then again, it's another investment. It's a lot to do. Another thing to consider is renter's insurance. So for example, if you're renting a space, whether you want to double check whether or not your belongings are protected. If this place were to catch on fire, I do know that my items are protected, my professional items are protected. And that's amazing. If someone were to come in and steal it, it's protected. So that's that can go a long way for peace of mind. All right, and I think the last concrete thing I want to talk about that would help you in your business is going to be business coaching. So there's a lot of places you can get business coaching. So I'm not saying that you necessarily have to hire somebody or find an online coach. For example, um, I know through Lime Life by Alcone or other direct sales companies, there's a lot of resources to help you be a better business person, um, to have a better mindset, to understand a lot about you know, networking, advertising, all that kind of thing, and help you to understand the next steps and how to scale your business larger. That can go really far. Um, and <clears throat> I will tag my business coaches below. I think they're phenomenal. Um, but when I remember listening to Jen Sincero, she has the um, book, You Are a Badass at Making Money. And I guess part of it is you can listen to a lot of books and do a lot of research on your own and have, you know, random people be your business coaches simply by, you know, studying and learning more. But Jen Sincero says that um, even athletes, Olympic athletes have coaches. And the people at the bottom of their game think that they can do it on their own, but the people at the top of the game killing it have mentors and coaches. And I know that for sure. So I recommend you get a business coach. If you wanted to have someone help you with Lime Life by Alcon or coaching in general, I am so down. I would love to help mentor more estheticians and people running businesses, especially with Lime Life businesses. So let me know. I'd be down to help you out. So... 
And then some soft skills because I, these are some things that I might not have mentioned in my other video. Like I said, it's been a year since I made it, so we'll see how it goes. But resilience. Resilience is incredibly important. You're going to be discouraged. You're going to feel like you're having bad days. You're going to feel like you're spinning your wheels. But being able to bounce back and keep going is incredibly important. Also, having a decision that you're going to make this work. This is not for the faint of heart. You have got to decide that you're going to be a solo esthetician, that you're going to do it on your own, that you want to do it on your own, and that you're going to stick with it. Because it is sometimes really lonely. It is sometimes really discouraging. I only had one client today, and it was an amazing client. I love her to pieces, and it was phenomenal, and I made good money. But I'm also sitting here like, oh my gosh, like, what am I going to do? I don't know. It just, you have a lot of questions run through your brain. So I'm telling myself the story that it's going to get better, that it's going to snowball, that my client that I had today is going to tell her friends and they're going to tell their friends and it's just going to keep going. So I am determined that I'm making this work and that is a huge part. You have to decide that it's going to happen. Um, also, it helps to have customer service skills, knowing how to navigate unhappy customers, knowing how to network, like I said, that's another soft skill. Um, you want to have a phenomenal money and abundance mindset. You need to charge what you're worth. You need to understand that your time is valuable. You need to know that your product recommendation is valuable. You should be getting commissions. Somehow, some way, you should be getting commissions. And you should have good photography skills. Have you thought about that? Have you done, are you, do you feel really confident with taking selfies? Do you feel really confident with taking flat lays? Those are really, really helpful in your social media skills. And having a good social media presence is huge. So as, as funny as memes are, if you post all memes, you're gonna drown. You're gonna drown and no one's gonna really see you and understand you in your social media. You have to stand up and share your life, share who you are, and that will attract your clients, that will attract business partners, that will attract so many opportunities. So really having a really good social media presence can go so far. Um, and I think the last thing I wanna mention is having an ability or an idea of investing in new training can go really far. I know when I first started, I invested in last training and that felt really fun. It was it felt like a big investment. And I have made a lot of money back from that. And there's a lot of stuff I still want to invest in. I want to invest in lash lifts. I want to invest in, um, I might even do microblading training someday. Not that I can do it in this studio, but we always have continuing education in mind. And that is something really important to consider. So... I hope these ramblings in my list of stuff were helpful, especially for those who felt like my last video was not as concrete and helpful about how to start and create and kick off a solo esthetician business. So like I said, I'm going to leave a bunch of links in the comments. Um, some of them are going to be my affiliate links to, you know, my QuickBooks, um, not my QuickBooks, but QuickBooks, Vagaro. Um, and Lime Life by Alcone and let me know if you have questions. I love to be a resource. I love hearing from you guys. I love hearing from the new estheticians. I love cheering you on. I think that this is the future of our industry is being solo and having that really genuine connection and relationship with your clients. So if you feel called to go solo so that you can have that type of control, I'm so here to cheer you on. I'm so excited for you. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I know this was long. Hopefully it was educational. Hopefully it, it gave you new insights about what kind of undertaking it would be to have your own business. But I truly think it's worthwhile. I really, really think it's worthwhile. I have never been happier in my life. I have never been more satisfied and excited for the future. So I think that if this, if you feel called, I think it's something for you. So, and I think there's room for you too. Like, don't worry about competition. That could be a whole nother conversation. But yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day.